Hello there, welcome back. So this video will be the first part that deals with the room library, the database part of the application. We'll be doing it in two parts. The first one will present the room library and its three components and implement them. In the second part, we'll be making the connection to the database and inserting data in it. So first of all, what is the room library? The room persistent library provides an abstraction layer over SQLite to allow for more robust data access with SQL syntax. So it's actually a local database on the device to handle the storage aspect of the app. It has three components, the data entity class, the data access object class, and the database class. The database class serves as the main access point for the app's persistent relational data. The entity class represents a table within the database, and the data access object is responsible for defining methods to access the database and interact with it. So this is an external library. We need to implement it in or import it in the Gradle file. I'll be copying some lines and pasting them. Here I have the room version. Then I implement the room runtime, also the room compiler, and a coroutine support for the room. Here we'll make in use of CAPT. The plugin should be here. If you don't have it, like me, just add it here, Kotlin capped. Now sync and give it a moment. Now we can go ahead with the implementation phase. Here we will start with the entity class. So create a new Kotlin class and name it add record. This should be a data class. And in order for the room library to recognize it as an entity class, we need to give it an annotation entity. This entity needs an argument, table name, and we want to name it audio record. The audio record has a few arguments. The first one is the file name. That is a string. The second one is the file path, also a string. Then the timestamp long and the duration that we will be displaying in the list uh, and it should be in string format too just as the timer in the main activity and finally the amps path that is the path for the file storing the amplitude because we'll be listening to the audio record with the media player and the media player doesn't have the option to retrieve amplitude. So if you want to draw the waveform, we need to store the data somewhere. And this is string two. So all of the arguments will be table columns with these exact names. You can specify special names for the table simply by adding a column info annotation with the name field. And you can ignore some fields or specify primary key. So let's first specify a primary key with the primary key annotation uh, okay import it and add the auto generate parameter call it id and start at zero so every time we create a new entity the id will be auto generated with the right number now i'd like a variable is checked set to false this will be used in the later videos but I don't want to store it in the database. So I can just add a ignore annotation and that's it. Now let's create the data access object. Kotlin class, interface actually not class, audio record data access object. So the DAO will help us to perform CRUD operations on the database. We have two type of functions we can use here, query methods that let you write your own SQL queries, or convenience methods to insert, delete, and update rows without writing any SQL code. So first of all, let's give it the annotation, data access object as usual, import it, and then let's start with the query method, annotation query, and we give it the query you want it to perform. Select all from audio records because we named it here audio records and we give it the function 
get all and whenever we call this function this query will be executed this function returns a list of audio record now place to the convenience methods you want to insert delete and update our records so use the insert annotation and just call the function insert and give it the parameter we wanted to insert it's audio record of type audio record and that's it we missed an r here that's it the room database will know what to do with this line here because we give it the insert annotation same thing with delete give it the annotation and the function port it and the function call it delete and the audio record we want to delete also i like to be able to delete many files at a time so same thing the delete annotation the function name and the same name but with different set of parameters and call it records the last function is the update and call the update with the audio record we want to update so it will recognize the id and update the right column in the database so that's it for the data access subject now the final component is the database class create a new class and name it app database this one is an abstract class and it and it extends room database Also, don't forget the annotation database. And this one has an entities parameter. Give it the array of the things we want to store. Add a record. And a version. So sometimes you might update your database schema. Let's say you want to add a, another field like timestamp or remove it. If your database already contains data instances, it will feel lost and crash on you. So you need to increment the version number and give it a migration plan. This is out the scope of this series, so we won't cover it. But let's finish this class. The room database needs to implement a, an abstract function. And name it audio record the AO data access object it will return the audio record data access object so that's it for the implementation phase of the database in the next video we will make a connection to this database from the main activity and insert uh, new records each time we hit the done button see you soon